Your love gives me the wings to fly through each and every day and the strength for every moment that I meet along the way. No matter where I am or even where I'll be, the thing that really matters is your right here next to me. I fear you deep inside this heart and what you go before. You're behind me and beside me. You're the waves upon the shore. star-filled boundless skies you're the yearnings in my songs and you're the tears within my eyes you're the light of every light you created Such mercy and such grace The wonder of forgiveness And the beauty of your face Beauty of your face You are the master of this world Yet go beyond both time and place Beyond the ever-infinite the strength for every moment that I meet along the way. No matter where I am or even where I'll be, the thing that really matters is your right here next to Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadayo Purnamivabhushishate Om Shanti Shanti, Shanti He. All that is invisible is verily the infinite Brahman. All that is visible is also the infinite Brahman. 
the entire universe has come out of that infinite Brahman. Brahman is infinite although the whole universe has come out of it. Om peace, peace, peace be unto us all. Good morning. And today our topic is big picture. <coughs> it's a question of looking at life and the world. We normally live with our petty details of our life. We view the world from our perspective to the trifles of our life. What is going on? What has happened this morning? What is happening next moment? But we lose the insight to see some bigger picture. Behind all these little happenings and life's ups and downs, there is a big picture behind, big reality, the great reality that is the unchanging absolute reality, that deathless, birthless reality. But our vision is blocked. That's why we don't see that bigger. In our life, if we look back from our childhood till today, how many things have happened? How many petty things have disturbed us? And the moment it happened, really we are lost. We are dead. We are gone. As if no hope. It is all darkness around. But still, if we look, stand now, sometimes we smile at those incidents and our reactions. So this is a call to look at the bigger picture, the biggest picture. That is what is called Bhuma. In the Upanishad, it is called the Bhuma, the great, the big. In the Chanda Upanishad, the Narada went to the teacher, Sanat Kumar, and when he asked about the truth, then the teacher told that you only happiness, the happiness which we find we are seeking for, is there only in that which is called Bhuma, which is infinite. Bhuma tuevo vijigashi tabyo. If you have to have any question in life, ask about that limitless, infinite reality. Nalpi shukhamasti. You are falsely looking at happiness in that which is little, which is petty, which is small. Every small wave and ripple. Behind that is the infinite ocean. Look at that perspective of that infinite ocean. Rather than end and die and cry and weep and end into the little web, little ripple, little bubble and its fights and its joys and its sufferings. And your search for life, long search, our all search throughout our life is to find the eternal bliss through that which we perceive through our senses. This perception through the senses is always delusive because it has its own limitation. The sense at universe, as I perceive, there are so many factors to perceive the truth, what is happening. The same thing which ordinary people, we get disturbed a real seeker of truth or actually those who are advanced in spiritual life, they think that that is an opportunity to open up 
for the higher reality, for the greater understanding of that self, the greater understanding about the truth which is everywhere hiding. At the same time, it is open. That's why Swami Vivekananda gave a talk, open secret. It is secret. We see this, but we don't see that which is unchanging. That which sees that the unchanging behind the changes, his vision or her vision is the right vision. So, the Upanishad continues, Yo voi bhuma tat sukham. That which is bhuma, infinite, that which is big, that is only the source of happiness. Nal pishu kamasti. There is no happiness in the limited. Bhuma tu eva vijigyashi tabya. That only one thing we should ask throughout our life is to know what is that Bhuma, what is that infinite, what is that limitless. Bhuma tu eva vijigyashi tabya. Iti bhuma nang bhagama vijigyashi iti. Therefore, you only question throughout your life what is big, what is infinite, what is limitless. We are all infinite, we are all divine, we are all pure. But we live with the petty little things, that's why we cry and die. Rabindranath Tagore is a beautiful grand poet, <laughs> and his, his poems are so powerful. He says in a song, that I live with only petty small things in my life. And that when I live with that pettiness and anything goes away, and then I feel I am lost. Even I lose a little particle of that which I have, I cry out, my heart cries out, I am lost, I am lost, I am lost. I am trying to hold on the waves and ripples in the river like a bed of a river. I am trying to hold those ripples and waves but and the flow of water I want to hold on but they only move away by giving a good thumping uh, uh, pain in our, my heart. And where they disappear, I do not know. That means the little stories of life, little happenings of life, it comes and hits us. But I want to hold on. Because I want to hold on, that becomes a terrible pain. And after that giving that stroke, where he disappears, no one knows. It goes away. It becomes a memory. When we say after a long time, we smile at that story. Something, whatever has happened, very miserable, very difficult. But now if I stand back and now talk about those stories to my friend, I smile sometimes. But that is the point because it has gone by and we have the perspective that that is moving and that is flying away. That which goes away, Tagore says, and that which stays remains, had I been able to offer you, O Lord, the grand, great Lord, all my lost things, shall I not find in you the infinite where everything stays? All my lost things which I lose in my petty life and petty moments of life, these are all in you the infinite. In you there are infinite stars and galaxies and the moon and sun. Then that's not, nothing is lost. Even an atom of subatomic particle is not lost there. And shall I not find all my lost things when I go to you, to see you, the infinite? Beautiful ideas, beautiful thoughts. How to look at life, how to approach our life. That yes, we'll have to live. And life is a journey. And that journey takes us to small things and petty experiences of life. But we should not end there. It leads us to understand that there is a bigger picture 
vaster dimension of reality, which we should see through it. What is the, we say normally, what is the lesson behind this incident? We, those who are little introspective, they want to go one step to see what is the lesson behind this incident. Incident has happened. Shankaracharya while well, talking about this in the verse of the Bhuma, this, this Bhuma Vidya in Chandra Upanishad I quoted, he says, anything finite, anything finite, he is a philosopher, so he's speaking the philosophical language, Anything which is finite causes trishna, the thirst. That is, it increases the desire to achieve more. Whatever we see, well, I see one beautiful object. Seeing that, I am not satisfied. I want to see the more beauty. I possess some money, I am not satisfied. It creating another thirst, more and more and more and more. This is the call for the infinite. Why are you not satisfied with whatever we get? I'm okay. I'm perfectly okay with my present condition, uh, monetary condition. But we are never in, cannot be, that is not the frame of creation. To this we are always trying to get something more and that is the innate tendency of Every created personality, every created being that want higher and higher and greater and greater. That means we are, we are being pulled into the bigger picture unconsciously to the strokes and uh, this, this beating of, our, uh, of the world. <laughs> world always beats us and to awaken our inner potentiality. So here he says, Sankara says, anything that finite, that causes thirst or trishna, that is, it increases the desire for more. Whatever we get, we desire more. Even one gets the whole world, whole universe, then also we'll be dissatisfied and unhappy. Therefore, that which is finite, that which is finite is the Cause of suffering. This is a very beautiful way of analyzing. If we don't change our perspective of looking, when we are looking at the small things only, then it is the, we are just planting the seed of dukkha or suffering. Dukkha or suffering is planted into the heart, when we are only thinking that this is the reality before what I am seeing now, or what is happening. It is, it's a play of infinite, divine play of joy and blessing is going on. It's, everything is permeated with Brahman, with that absolute Satchidananda reality, nothing but that. But I am seeing it, it is the birth of philosophy, that it appears but what appears is not the thing we are seeing. We are seeing the snake. But it is not the snake, it is the rope all the time. That bigger picture is that unchanging, peaceful, joyful. That's reality, state of peace and harmony. That is the Bhuma. That is the big picture. And we have to go through it because otherwise we are planting in our heart the cause of future suffering and pain. Dukkha, bijam. Bija is the seed. Seed of unhappiness when we are only focusing on the limited. He says that's why Sanat Kumar said that which is infinite is the source of happiness. There is no happiness in the finite. Happiness is only in the infinite. But one must try to understand what is infinite and what is infinite is and what is finite. So that is the point. It is the view to see. William Blake, that beautiful statement we all know, but he says, to see a world in a grain of sand. 
seeing the infinite, seeing the whole world in a grain of sand, just see the view, the penetrating idea it is given here. See that infinite in a grain of sand and heaven in a wild flower. We see wild flower everywhere. Who looks a big picture there? Oh, it is good, wild flower, no one cares. No one waters them, no one plants them. They, they born and give their little tiny show and they die. Who cares for them? But can we see in the little flower that heaven, wild flower, whose beauty, whose shining face, whose charm is attracting our eyes? It's the big picture. It's the, it's the God. God's living presence is there. Holding infinity in the palm of your hand. Infinity in the palm of hand and eternity in an hour. So this is called the looking beyond. We are to live in the limited perception of our existence. But we should not end there. It should see something beyond that. That is called spiritual life. That is called awakening into the consciousness. That is the big picture we have to focus every day. I like Rabindranath Tagore, but I can sing some song, <laughs> but it is <laughs> in Bengali. But it is unique. The ideas are unique idea. That in Tomorrow, Ashime, Prano, Mano, Leo, Ye, Jato, Dure, Amidhai, Kotao, Dukho, Kotao, Mritu, Kotao, Bichedo, Nai. There is no suffering, there is no death, there is no bereavement. In you, the big, the infinite, in your infinitude, as I swim through, as I move to the, towards that with my heart and soul, as much as I move, I find the deathless situation. There is no death. And death becomes real death. The suffering becomes severe suffering when I turn my face away from you and look at this little self, I. This petty I, small, I turn, I, most of us, always turning our face towards this, me and mine. My suffering, my pain, my joys, my achievement, my failures, my success. And anything connected with me, of course I will be suffering much, but even mine will also I suffer. My car is crashed. How much I suffer. I really get mad. And why that car has done that? Or why that person has... Really, that should be also. But in reality, we die there as it were. But if the bigger picture is there, that can console us. The reality of life should be there, but we should not cry and weep in the situation. We should be bold, like Swami Vivekananda talks in his son, song of the sannasins. The stay always, bold, sannasin, bold, say, ah, ah, om, tat, sat, om. That is the reality. That is the reality. Say all the time and look at the big picture. So we are turning our eye from you. Here you is the big picture. And turning to us the alpo, the small picture. The small picture has its role. In the background of the infinite, infinite, infinite play of the divine, there is the infinite ocean. Because of that infinite ocean, all the dancing and fighting and rolling and all these things in the surface of the waves are continuing. So this world play is going on because the foundation of the this play is the divine, is that infinite. That's why it is said, O oh Lord, there is everything, everything is, a, is there at your feet. And there is no fear there. But my fear is 
turn towards me only when I look towards me and me and I cry day and night. And all this pain and agonies of our life and all the load of our daily living just vanishes in a split moment if I can find your divine self in my heart and I see you present there. So this is the call that call for looking at the big picture and we must have to open ourselves up into that which is that infinite. Because we are all consciously, as I said, consciously, the spiritual seekers are consciously moving towards that. They are searching for, the question comes, why I am here? What am I to reach? How shall I reach that goal? Where is perfection? Where is infinite joy? That is a cry for everyone. When one is moving towards that consciously and giving up, we call, oh, he is a monk or he is a devotee. He is becoming a devotee. Devotee says, I am not much interested into those things which I was happy so long. And not a fool. He or she is saying that it didn't give me the desired joy and blessings. So I am no more interested in, I am seeking and searching for something more, something bigger, something higher. That's why people, when we get the, the see, the suffering of life is, we don't want it. And I pray that no one should suffer, including me also. <laughs> but that is, not this, that is not the point of awakening. We awaken when? When knocks and blows comes. When you will say, I am a good guy, I am very honest, see what is happening to me, this person is doing, there comes a question. So suffering is bad. But suffering is also, has a spiritual perspective of it. It gives us an opportunity to question about why. Why this is happening? And what is the role of me? And how can I transcend this present state? And to go to some other plane of reality where there will be no suffering. All the concept of all the religion, going to heaven after death. What is that? That means we, my, our, our yearning is that to go to a place where there will be no suffering. There will be no death. That's why they say, in heaven you go, you are always young. You will not be old. Why old is this bad? Well, because you will die. There is no disease. Well, oh, there, here is disease. There is no disease. No sickness. There is no need of any doctor. And there is no need of any lawyer. Because you are all in blissful state. So this is our expectation. This is our goal. So the, all the religious uh, Organization of all the religious philosophies are teaching us only to search for that which cannot be found here. And that con in concept of going to heaven is only one such step. But even if you go to heaven, then what will happen? You will find every day you are having very special items of food. After some days, you will be tired of that food. Then we'll come down to test for something else. There's a monotony is there. In anything, because that is coming to the senses again. Sensate experiences have its charm. And getting one level, we want to get more. So getting this joy in this material world, we know how frightening is this joy. How the sensate experience of food ends from tongue, touching the tongue here to here. Gone. All is memory. So, so limited. We want to go to heaven so that it will be prolonged joy. But prolonged is prolonged, not endless. Then you go there and you stay for, say, several years. Then you say, oh, is it this? It cannot give me satisfaction. It is also some sensate experience. Therefore, 
search for something which will be unending. That's why people, even in, our, in the scriptures, they say that heaven is not the goal. Vedanta does not guide us to go to heaven. Rather, say it is more suffering there. Why? You get stuck there. Here, if we get, forget our real nature and get in, involved into things of the small nature, not the big items, but the small things, if we go on, then there is a chance because knocks and blows come. And it make forces us to turn towards the world. Hey, why it is happening? Why it is happening? Then we go to the spiritual teachers, our good friends, to question about that, to find the meaning and purpose of this. So there is a chance to come out. That's why I call the human birth is so precious. More precious than gods and goddesses. Because there is some fun and uh, party going on day, every day. But every day's party, you get tired afterwards. You need some rest also from that party. So that, that cannot satisfy. Then they go again question, why and who is beyond? So it is step by step journey is there. And Vedanta teaches, don't get satisfied in that which is limited, that which gives you the experience of joy and happiness in this through the senses only. Or to the mind also. We have different levels, no? To the senses we get little joy to eating, seeing, touching, tasting, like that. But in mental joy is also there, emotional level, or your the poets. The creative writers, the artists, they live in the mental level. They don't care for this physical level. So, and intellectual people, all the great philosophers and scientists, they live in another level. There is greater joy. But all joy ending at a certain point. But there is, where the joy comes, that is the eternal joy which is behind our very existence. That's why Tagore also always talking about that to swim in the ocean of infinity. But he also gives us this idea that you have to feel that you have not reached that goal. Has to know that our infinity is our nature. But to know that we should not be satisfied with limited little things. Though we have to live in the limited, because my body is limited, my mind is limited, my senses are limited. Understand that. But we should not end in this type of understanding. Therefore, Vedanta system teaches us, Swami Vivekananda says, that it starts with tremendous pessimism. Why pessimism? They say, hey, no, no, no. Don't get stuck here. No, say, what is that, limited? No. Is there any touch of unlimited? Hold on to that. That's why I say, just withdraw your mind and then try to, try to look back into your inner realm. And dive deep here. The big picture is there, here, everywhere. More here. Turning the total attention from this side to turning this side. That's why I call Paranchi Khani Vatrinath Sayambhu. Tasmat parang pashyati nantar atman. The atman is the big picture, the self, the reality. When God created all the objects of the universe, particularly living and moving objects, the senses are looking this way. Paran chikhani, all the senses. Eyes are seeing only the beauty outside. Ears are seeing, listening to the Sound outside, nose is always smelling, fragrance, great, fragrance, better, yeah, fragrance industry. How much is precious is that? How many billions of dollars of industry is that? Only, what a beautiful smell, huh? fragrance. A little fragrance bottle is how much? It costs heavy, thousand dollar, two thousand dollar, I heard. Anyhow, so this is only the, but for how long? Same, all the senses are, 
all focused outside and it can grab the outside fragrance, outside beauty, outside joy. Because it is that eyes have been created and objects are created. This contact is going on and we are running here, running here, running here. Like the deers running for the fragrance uh, in the forest hundreds of miles. Where is the beautiful fragrance I am getting, no? But to ultimately to understand that it is coming from his own her own pouch that is coming within. So the spiritual journey of searching for the infinite starts there and failing there, they turn inward. Paran chikhani bhattinat tasmat paran pashati. Therefore, we are apt to look at the limited things of the object and the outside only. And we don't look on the Atman. The Atman, the self which is in here and which is the source of giving all these expressions of joy. So therefore, turn your eyes inward. That is the turning point, looking at something bigger picture. And then people, they become calm, they become serene. They being tired of searching the joy outside. Swami Vivekananda's beautiful poem is there in search of God where he expresses wonderfully that in search of God eh? he said that in hill in hill and dell in mountain caves in deep forest and in every war I went and ran to find the joy here and there and everywhere and tried and tried and moved and moved I went to the temples and churches and the mosque and every place I went to the holy pilgrimage and I find a response is coming nowhere, nowhere, nowhere. And suddenly one day, Misim, I find the voice calling me. I am here, I am here. Oh my Lord, you are here in me, so near. And I was searching thee. And that transformed. He said that that transformed me. Then I see you everywhere. That Vuma just appeared. It is there. A veil as if dropped. And the whole universe permeated with that joy. Then I find in every leaf, in every creation, with the minutest to the biggest, that all is pulsating with that same infinite reality, the Bhuma, that is the Ben. So this is the transformation happens. That's why Rabindranath Tagore says, you know, in your spiritual journey, in our spiritual journey, we may have little glimpses of, I saw a dream last night. Good. But don't stop there. It is nothing. It is only just a little spark of light giving an idea that there is something higher. You have a vision. I saw some light in my meditation. It is nothing. It is only a glimpse of the truth. A touch of that reality. But you have to feel that I have not finished my journey. I have to move on and on and on. God is infinite and our journey is infinite. This Bhuma to search, this search is a scientific search. We should have to move on and on and on till we reach that Bhuma. There we die. When you reach Bhuma, you cannot stay there anymore. This little self which is searching, 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 finding its own origin, it will be infinite. It will be that what he was, what it was, that limitless, that bliss, unchanging and unadulterated pure consciousness. That's why he said, Jodi tumar dekha na pai prabhu evare jibane tabe tumai ami pai ni jeno she katha roi mone Bule na jai, bedo na pai, shayone, shapone. In my dream, in my awakened state, let me always be reminded that I have not received you, I have not reached you, dear O oh Lord, oh my dear Lord, in this life, now and here. It, let it be always a pain in my heart to remember that I want to reach that big picture, that reality, that foundation of me, that eternal blissful state 
which has been enumerated in the Upanishads and in scriptures and in all religions. And we adore those people who are established in that reality, like Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Shankara, Christ, all this Chaitanya, Rama, Krishna. So, so therefore, in our day-to-day spiritual journey, let us remember always that I have not reached that goal. I will have to reach that. So it starts, as Swami Vivekananda says, that spiritual life or Vedanta and the Vedanta tradition it starts with tremendous pessimism. Not this. Don't get satisfied with this little eating, little sleeping and dancing and dying. No, no, no. That's not the life. Get out, get out. It's not, 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 not. It's a pessimistic view. Many people will say, what type of religion you are talking about? I have my food, I have my things, I won't not enjoy. You say, give up, give up, give up. Are, I do not know whether I shall get something else or not. Neither I get that side, neither I will miss this side. So, but it says that, and, but Vedanta ends in real pessimism, optimism, real, sorry. This, it, the Vedanta ends with the real optimism. What is that optimism? We deny the sense of optimism. Vivekananda says, we deny the sense of optimism. But as are the real optimism of the super sensuous. That is a journey, that is a search for the big picture. And it is here and now. We are not to purchase, we are not to bring from somewhere else. Only to change our perspective, change our view of looking at. We always limit our journey by finishing in the limited thing only. But to go a little deeper needs courage. It needs detachment, power of self-control to dive deep. As I said before, quoting the Kato Upanishad, that they only looking for joy in the outside with the sense and the sense, sense objects is a failure because they are all limited. Limited cannot give you unlimited joy. Only unlimited can give you unlimited joy. To see that unlimited, that infinite, that big, that is, should be the ch- life's journey. Therefore, the real happiness is not in the senses. Swamiji Vivekananda continues, but above the senses, and it is in every person. The sort of optimism which you see in the world is what will lead to ruin through the senses. That is the point. The sense optimism which we see and run after, it proves its existence is void after some time in our life. Then you are nowhere. But there is another view. Seeing this reality, if one can see the big picture and enjoy the life, that is also possible. We can enjoy the world much more through the senses. But what I am seeing, I am seeing that infinite. I am seeing that limited. Can we dive deep through all the waves and ripples and touch the ocean? We are all little bubbles or ripples or waves. When I leave with this little idea, I am this much wave. And these are my friends and these are my enemies. That my life goes on with that limitation. But if I can penetrate through all these little waves and ripples and go down, see the same ocean. That is the big picture. Diving deep here and diving deep there. Vedanta says, I am that. Not the mind, not the body, not this limitation. But what is that behind this? That is the big picture. And thou art that. You are also that. You, not this frame of body and mind, but behind which the consciousness that is pulsating is behind every one of us, it is the same reality, same consciousness there, same consciousness here. That is the Vedantic final analysis, that it is only play of one infinite reality. And then life becomes enjoyable. So Rabindranath Tagore says that don't forget 
that you have not reached that ultimate state of joy. Wherever you see, there is the presence of the divine. Everywhere is peace and joy. That is the goal. Never forget that. And be really fear, really always aware that I have not reached you, O Lord, the infinite, the absolute, the changeless, the truth. That's why he say, in this, in this drama, in this marketplace of this world and worldliness, as my days pass on and on, and as much as wealth and prosperity comes and my hand becomes full with that, let me understand, let me feel, oh Lord, I have not reached you yet. It is, it is a thing of the world, it will go. It will stay here when I die. What happens? Billion dollars or billionaires may be good and they're enjoying the life. The world wealth is in the hand of how many people? How many people suffer? How many people enjoy billions and billions and billions? Okay, good. But when death comes, it equals everything. Where is the wealth go? Well, the bank balance will go. It will remain in the bank or in someone's hand. But I will go empty-handed. There is the point. Live in the world. Remember that I cannot stop my journey. I cannot search. I cannot stop my search until I reach that big picture. That reality which is ingrained in me. I am standing on that reality. I am working on that reality. I am talking on that reality. I am viewing everything to my senses, to looking at the same reality. That's to see that divine everywhere. That should be the... That means what he's talking about, that let us feel pain. He says that, Jano bhule na jai, bedo na pai, shayone, shapone. In my dream, even my dream, let me, re it remind me, I have not reached that infinite yet. That, I'm, that journey I will have to continue until I reach that absolute. If sometimes, due to laziness, I sit on the side of a, side of a footpath, and if I lie down in the dirty earth, let me understand, I will have to make a journey to reach that infinite, to reach that absolute. In the entire path I am to travel, I cannot be lazy in my spiritual journey. Then, oh, let me... And maybe in sometimes your life is full of laughter. And you are full of fun and joy in your life. And as much as you decorate your house, building, and your own self, I let me understand that, oh Lord, I have not brought you in my heart, in my palace here, which is inside. It is empty. I am to search for you. I am to reach you. I am to find you in my every movement. So that pangs of separation, that feeling, it's called the Vyakulata. And Ramakrishna has defined this word. Vyakulata means the intense yearning. It is not philosophically knowing that there is no joy in the infinite will not do. But there should be a craving for that. I will have to reach that. I have not yet done that. However, maybe the struggle, focus should be there. How our life goes on. Look at that. We are all have passed through years and years of our life. 5, 10, 12, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. Still I am searching in the world, the joy. Experience not enough that what I got, how much I served, how much energy I gave it for this changing world with all its limitations. But it is my misconception. There is no limit of this infinity. It is it is peeping in, peeping through the every senses, every object. So he is smiling. He, uh, he, his 
presence is the presence of everything. Uh, he's smiling, everything smiles. His joy is percolating to every joy. But I don't see that. I see only limited, limited, limited. Therefore, this is the philosophy that sense experience is not bad. But if we only look the world as a little object of the senses, then it is short-lived, it is limited, and it has its end. But when you see from the bigger perspective, which is called big picture, we see the Brahman, then Brahman is unlimited and real picture comes out and it per permeates to everything wherever we glance, we see the divine and that divinity here, that divinity outside, that is the goal of life. Swami Vivekananda, in the high Himalayas, one day he was walking and he sat under a people tree and went into deep meditation. And then when he came out of that, he said, I have found a great, solved a great mystery of the world. What is that great mystery? That which is in the macrocosm, I found that that which is in the macrocosm, macrocosm, and that same thing is in the microcosm. In the atom, subatomic level, go down deep into the same consciousness, and in the macro, that vast sun and moon and stars and galaxies, the same reality, all pervaded consciousness and reality. That is the goal of our life. That is the objective world where you want to reach. So let us look into our day-to-day -day living, not to end our journey with this limited idea of life, but to see this, what is very powerful. Swami Vivekananda's words are very powerful. He says that, come out, Vivekananda says, come out into the universe of light. Everything in the universe is yours. Stretch out your arms and embrace it with love. If you ever felt you wanted to do that, you have felt God. If you ever felt that you wanted to do that, at least one thing, we want to see the light everywhere. He's saying to you, light is everywhere. And I am not seeing it is my blinding ignorance. He calls us, come out into the universe of light. Everything in the universe is yours. Stress out your arms and embrace it with love. Holy Mother Sarada Devi said, she didn't go to school or college, but in her own experience what she said, my child, if you want to find peace in life, don't find fault with others. Try to love and try to make the world your own. No one is stranger. That means it is you. That's absolute non-dualistic big picture in which she used to live and live. And that's why, from the same perspective, Swami Vivekananda said in one place, he says that we should look upon each other in the most charitable light. It is not easy to be good. You are good because you cannot help it. Another is bad because he cannot help it. If you were in the position, who knows what you would have been. The woman in the street or the thief in the jail is the Christ that is being sacrificed that you may be a good person. Such is the law of balance. All the thieves and the murderers, all the unjust, the weakest, the wickedest, the devil, they are all my Christ. That is my doctrine. I cannot help it. That's my doctrine. I cannot help it to see the divine in the wicked, wicked person and the wickedest person and not in the holy, holy person. That is my view, means Vivekananda's view. My salutation goes to the feet of the good, the saintly, and to the feet of the wicked and the devilish. They are all my teachers. So that is the vision, big picture, to see the divine everywhere. And that will come following some process of spiritualizing our life. Thank you all.
next sunday july 3 prabhajika brajaprana will be speaking on the topic how can we help how can we help by prabhajika brajaprana will we can sit for some time for question answer if you are interested please come back after i greet you all I conclude with a chant <coughs> Om Madhu Bhata Ritayate Madhu Kshranti Sindhavaha Madhvir Na Santo Shadihi Madhu Naktam Uto Shasi Madhu Matparthi Vagum Rajaha Madhu Dhurastu Napita Madhu Manno Manaspati Madhu Magum Mastu Surjaha 
ಮಾಧ್ವೀರ್ಗಾವು ಭವಂತು ನಃ ಓಂ ಮಧು ಓಂ ಮಧು ಓಂ ಮಧು ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಬ್ಲೌಸ್ ದ ವಿಂಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿ ವೆರಿ ಓಷನ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಬರ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸೆಡ್ನೆಸ್ ಮೇ ದಿ ಅರ್ಬ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲ್ಯಾಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿನೆಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಬಿ ದ ನೈಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆತ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ಎವ್ರಿ ಪಾರ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಮದರ್ ಅರ್ಥ್ ಬಿ ಚಾರ್ಜ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಬ್ಲೆಸಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಮೇ ದಿ ಹೆವನ್ಸ್ ಸಾವರ್ ಅಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಬೆನೆಡಿಕ್ಷನ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಬಿ ದ ನೋಬಲೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ದಿ ರೇಡಿಯಂಟ್ ಸನ್ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಬಿ ಆಲ್ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಷನ್ ಓಂ ಸ್ವೀಟ್ ಹನಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪೀಸ್ so uh, could you suggest huh could, okay so i'm uh, this is about objective reality when you take a look at things objectively um could uh, how do you find the best way to um switch from a subjective reality from a subjective reality into an objective reality like if you have a confrontation a person has a confrontation with you and you go like what's all that about and so you you take a look at it objectively intuitively we do so if you see a situation that you want to find the truth in it what the truth is what they're talking about or how do you have a way of um a suggestion of how we could switch into an objective reality when did um the question is that when something is happening how we look at the ob- the thing objectively or subjectively yes both vision will be there when it is happening someone is misbehaving or ill treating or taking advantage of me there will be a subjective experience and subjective reaction and in the realistic life we should have to take the proper step to overcome that but internally we should have to see a bigger picture who is that naughty guy in him is all same consciousness in me is all the same consciousness this is only happening in the play of duality in the name and form so we can keep this two views simultaneously one view in the realistic life it is a gunas playing with the gunas someone is trying to hit me i need to protect me or to guard me this in the level of physical world physical reaction going on mentally i may be upset someone is making me upset or i am making someone upset mind acting in that level but i am not finished in these two levels i am something behind the same energy spiritual energy which is called the consciousness is is behind he, that good guy bad guy behind me behind everyone so we can see that play of god there to keep the inner peace then our tension anxieties and other things will go away that is the art of living art of living is that we will have to face the challenges that's why practical book is bhagavad gita we were reading yesterday eh? how to do the work in the work period you cannot say oh this is all false and just think i am atman you are we are not capable of doing that but there are people in the world who can do that there are people christ was crucified and he can say god bless them they do not know what they are doing no there are people but i am not in that level if someone comes to hit me i have to protect myself i have to guard myself the physical level but at the same time i can develop that spirit that who is behind that guy who is hitting me we oh you refer this story again and again there is one holy man in a monastery and he was going for begging or something and some people some person beat him till he was unconscious for reason god knows and he hearing this news when he reached the monastery some of the monks came and 
took that guy, that Swami, to home, and they are trying to bring him to senses by giving little warm milk and this and fanny. And then when he opened his eyes first, and is coming back to senses, he asked, who have done this to you? And the holy man said, the man, the he who is fanning me, who is feeding me the milk, the same person. So this is inner, see how inner tranquility they have developed. That's why if we make a spiritual journey, that will be the peaceful state, no one can hurt me. But now I am not in that state. So I will have to have some practical measure in the physical level and in the spiritual measure we should develop to try to transcend that only not to end our life in that event only. Most of us end our life in that event and we carry on for today, for tomorrow, for months and years and whole life has become a scar. This person did this much to me. Yeah? And we, we, we die with that anguish and pain and agonies. But one can transcend that also in this process. Difficult, though difficult, it's difficult. But this, that is the way of success, to see the big picture. Also, also it is said that, why people become mean to me? They are mean people, that's why they are behaving with me. They are bad people, I am a good person. Why they are doing to me? But a spiritual seeker will say, hey, this is to awaken my consciousness. If you would, would always behave sweetly, I never thought. I never think that why it is happening. When someone loves me, I am very happy. But when one does not, then I am angry. That the guy is bad. I am correct. So those situations does not give us opportunity to see beyond the event. So for a spiritual seeker, these are opportunities. These are good opportunities which reveals unto us and give us an op op option to solve the immediate problem to a deeper depth. And be those who, ah, yeah. Uh, your song was wonderful, by the way. Thank you, sir. Yeah, the <laughs> beginning and the end, both the songs. I was thinking of all the different characters and people that, it, that um, Sri Ramakrishna and Holy Mother had to deal with. They really went through a lot of suffering, too, with some oh, of the people in their families. And yeah, more than us, <laughs> yeah, even. More than place. many of us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they had the, because they're established in some higher knowledge, see something more than we see. That make them reconcile. <laughs> that is the point. We cannot reconcile because we see the waves fighting with wave. But we don't see the energy which is making the waves rise above the calm ocean. That's the, <laughs> it's God's play. We call mother's play. Uh, give name anyway, Maya, it's called Mahamaya, turn hundreds ways, ignorance, whatever name we give, but there is that divine play, cosmic play, and we are, in, we are part of that cosmic reality. So we have these um, these situations that have happened in our lives, and they continue to happen in our lives, and um, we need to look at them differently. But um, some of us have, uh, being the age that we are now, 
and not having the information that we're getting now, um, we form patterns of, of these things having an effect on us. And it's a pattern that's happened for so long. The pattern has actually happened longer, you know, just speaking for myself, it's happened longer in my life than I've had the knowledge of spirituality that will help me clear that. Do you have any um, um, suggestions of how we can even the playing field? Speed up. <laughs> yeah, how we can speed up. <laughs> Vedantus is always very hopeful. You start today. Start today, move towards that truth. Go and let whatever happens, failure, failure, again, try, again, try. So endless. Because you, when we see that someone is better than me in the spiritual journey, can tackle the situation much better than me, he has started a little earlier. In his life it has come. He went like you and me, the same stages, and they have reached a certain stage. So Hindu has a Hindus have a good solution of that. Life is a continuous life, not this life is nothing. It is only a, a in in between a journey. Life started much earlier. So who started much earlier? Who started when? We do not know. But we are going. Our train is going from from here to San Francisco. The train passes all the stations all the experiences, no? Someone has done, who has gone in the morning train, someone is going in the afternoon train, you will have the same experience. Huh? So all will go through the experiences, someone ahead, someone behind, someone with me. But we have to go through this experience and the experience is our teacher. And we can, if we understand, when it becomes unbearable, then solution comes quicker. So long we are happy and manageable, that up till then I think that is okay, okay, okay. Uh, but when it becomes unmanageable, then we become serious and sincere. I have to solve this problem now. To withdraw. Don't find that joy and seeking this thing, that thing from the world. Don't expect from anyone. You expect you you are expecting from your own dearest friend, you are making a mistake. You will get a blow. Don't expect. Be like a free person. I don't care for anything. Not with arrogance, as I say, but with real knowledge. Because, yes, I will have to face my journey. I don't expect anything. I love love. I, I give, give. What it matters? He behaves this way, that way. It is his business. He is free to do that. And I am free to do this. So if that is the strength which we can develop in ourselves. And every day we can be bold. And we can cry also in depression. Ha, ha, ha. I did that much so many days. I knew that once he did that, I forgive him. You have to forgive. You forgive yourself. Why I expect? I don't expect anything. I am a king. I am a queen. Maybe why give one penny? But one penny king. <laughs> <laughs> understand that point that the mental strength should be there that I don't expect anything what the world will give me it is all little thing little thing cannot satisfy me today's subject put it in if we put it into our thought then you will be bold now for which you are going to depression why why the same person why they are depressing me why they are accusing me why they are oppressing me why they are treating me you are going down, 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 no one to help. You say, what? Let them do their business. Let me do my business. Be, you see, now I am standing straight. I am sitting straight. I was like that, I become like that. So all of us can be like. That is the Vedanta. <laughs> be bold. Be bold. You do your thing, let them do that. The scorpion, there is a story of the scorpion and the holy man. The holy man was meditating on the bank of a uh, river and he suddenly found, he was meditating, but his compassion comes in their heart more. So a scorpion just was just dropped from him. And he get up from the meditation and just went and pulled out that scorpion to save the life of scorpion and tried to hold and throw away. But you know scorpion, scorpion is biting. 
He gave a good biting. And he was in pain. And he threw away on the bank on this side. <coughs> but anyhow, it was not sufficient distance or whatever. It came round again. Again, second time he lifted it. And third time also he lifted it. It is every time giving a biting. But the holy man is going to save the life. And scorpion is giving the bite. Scorpion is doing scorpion's duty. Scorpion, what can he do? Tell me. What scorpion can do? Will they will give you a good plate of food? Or do you any, any holy message to us? No. He thinks, I am, someone is holding me, means probably trying to kill me. It's a life of fear. Eh? So, some also some holy mother said, to, as we normally say, to why the person is behaving, that, that also can bring some understanding about oppo or position of the other person. The scorpion's duty is scorpion biting and holy man's duty to serve. So these two will go on. So holy man should not give up his own virtue. A scorpion will not be able to get out of his virtue because that body-mind complex has been created that way. So if we know this, then we can be in the situation and, and look at the situation differently. So different perspective of life. Difficult, we may say all these examples and things, but in life it is difficult. But difficult, that is the journey, spiritual journey. Yes. Um, uh, I was still thinking of... of um, hmm? A little louder. I, I was thinking about um, our holy people take on the suffering of, of us all. Jesus and Ramakrishna, Buddha, they take on the suffering of us, of us all. But um, uh, I'm wondering why, why we... Um, expect them to take on our suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a Holy Mother at one time I, I read said, why does all of Calcutta think that I can, uh, I am here to, to um, s uh, solve or s serve them, or s take their sufferings on? Because mm -hmm. she was bombarded daily with people, is mm -hmm. that correct? Mm -hmm. And yeah, and had so much um, because they have to do. Yeah, because they have much money, they can give the money to us. <clears throat> because they have a huge amount of money they have collected in their bank account. <laughs> so <laughs> and it is, as I said, it is the nature of the Holy Mother. <laughs> she cannot but <laughs> give it. She is suffering, but anyone, she said, anyone calling me mother, I cannot stop him uh, what, to give whatever he wants, no? That's a mother. I, I cannot do that. Even Ramakrishna said, you should not do. But Holy Mother said, I cannot do that. <laughs> Anyone calls upon me as mother, <laughs> I am helpless there. Uh, so this is her nature. What can she do? And they have come for that purpose. Your response is that, your question? One, one, one Brahmachari or, I do not know, one name is not mentioned. Uh, she came back after giving the mantra and then he came back and said ma please take back your mantra mother said what type of talk is this what do you say why, why are you saying so oh ma you do not know I know that if the teacher guru will have to take the sin of the disciple so I have done such bad things in my life. I cannot tell you, mother. So I don't want that you should suffer for my cause. Please, you withdraw your mantra. So that I will suffer my, my consequences. Why you shall suffer for me? What was the mother's response? Mother said, my child, yeah, the, the, if the child soils his cloth, who is to clean and clear that? 
Is it the responsibility of the baby? Or it is the responsibility of the mother? That is the point. Uh, it is mother takes, it is mother. She is mother. She is mother of the universe. Uh, so she is, he has come down only to redeem us. Christ, why he suffered? For redeeming us. There's, as is the nature of us in one way, and that is the nature of Christ, Buddha's, Rama's, Krishna's. Buddha says, I'll be born. Uh, Buddha, Bodhisattva is a state again and again coming back to redeem the suffering. Vivekananda said, I shall be born again and again uh, till the suffering of human. Even the dog remains unfed. To feed him, I will come back. What a heart! Because that is their purpose. That is their goal. So, that way uh, and also these are examples how to endure in life, how to suffer, how to make our life's journey little stronger. <coughs> I like these questions. I think it's all probably. I like the questions of uh, getting a shortcut to, um, uh. <coughs> to help us because when we're here it's so easy to listen and know that's what I want to be. But when we get out in the world, that's mm -hmm. difficult. And um, I, this question keeps coming to me when um, about 20 years ago, my mother died. And she was very the most loved person. A little person. louder. Huh? She was the most loved person in my life. But when she died, um, I was in the room, and it was so peaceful. It was as if when the soul was leaving, I had such peace instead of breaking down and crying. When I had my children and they bring the soul, it was such joy. But with the, the leaving of the soul, I had such peace. And I thought to myself, I'm going to be here someday and I need to find a way to meditate to find that peace. And so my question is, even though I've been meditating for 40 years, I have a difficult time maintaining that peace and finding, mm. like, what are we looking for? Mm. And how do we, like, say, maintain that peace mm. in the outer world? And, yeah. and since I don't have much time, I want the shortcut. Yeah. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. but very good, very good question. Uh, that's why Ramakrishna gave the solution that we need holy company. Now, holy company means in early days it was difficult to go to some holy company, walking far away where he lives to find him and to really get this opportunity. But now, by God's grace, uh, this, all this, this iPad and other things, phone, YouTube. Uh, these are all opportunities to give us holy, holy company. We have to make more association with this type of thought. As you said just now, because we are discussing more than one hour, these thoughts make sense. But when you go outside, people don't talk about that. People live in another realm of vibration. Naturally, we catch them more, and that they stop our little wave which of thought which was coming, it overwhelms that. Therefore, what we have to do, shortcut journey, as Ramakrishna said, holy company is the best, easiest way, because they live in that life and consciousness, and they can their vibration will help us to lift ourselves. But nowadays, as I said, we can get this touch of this holiness through talks, lectures, reading all available books, beautiful books, not at random going 20, 30 philosophies together. Whether you take Vedanta, take Vedanta, that's all. Because every path leads to the goal. So people make a mixture of this and that and that, and that, that makes a confusion also. Simple path, take anyone what your heart resonates, and 
listen that type of talk, listen, sing that type of songs, read that type of books, associate with that type of people, try to make your time for this type of opportunity. When it is given, how many people come? Look at that. There's an opportunity is here, but how many people could come? Because maybe they have duties or responsibilities. But that is the point. That is also duty. This is also duty. This is also responsibility. I am to be freed from bondage. How can I reach? How can I live in that exalted state? So that I have to give some price. So I will go. I will meet. I will understand. I will not understand. But I will associate with all these things. So that type of urge itself is a sign of our spiritual growth. Maybe we not be successful, but at least to yearn for them is a sign of our growth and development. So we'll have to take those opportunities and keep the mind always. How can you keep the mind? Say, take a few lines of holy text and leave your tune, your mind into that consciousness whole day. Today, with this lofty thought. Tomorrow, this lofty thought. No? Everything is Brahman. No? Everything is Brahman. One line. I can take it. Everything is Brahman. Though I see, not, I don't see Brahman. But it is Brahman. It is truth. It is reality. It is, it is all bliss. Uh, so, he shining, everything shines. Wherever a smile, wherever some beautiful thing, it is Lord shining, God is shining. God is saying, let my mind at least think about that a few times. And then if this accumulated effect of this will be, one day realization will come and we'll find inner joy. Uh, the outer forces will not be able to overwhelm me that much as it was doing before. Rather, rather you will contribute to them. Your thought will give some support to their other people who want to move in this path. Okay, thank you. Okay, so thank you all for this question.